Kage here and today we're talking about my favorite thing in the entire world. It's comic books. Some of you may know that I am a comic book slinger, a comic book girl. I work full time at All Star Comics Melbourne, slinging comics, talking comics. I live, breathe, love comic books and there is nothing I love more than getting you guys reading. Getting you guys reading. So. I have piled up everything I've read from manga to single issues to graphic novels. There is horror, there is romance, there is LGBTQI, there is all kinds of fun for everyone. And so without further ado, let's talk about the comics I've been reading. We need to talk about Liam's influence on my comic book reading. So after our Best Comics of 2017 video, which I'll link down below in case you haven't seen it, I was editing it and putting in all the photos and I was up to the bit where Liam was talking about I am a hero, which is what we're going to talk about and I just fell in love, I just had to read it. So I picked up volume 1 from the library and haven't put it down, I'm already up to volume 3, it is by Kengo Hanazawa, it is a horror comic and probably the best zombie comic I have ever ever read. It is explosive, you never know what you're going to read and while many horror comics kind of do the stock standard, you know what you're going to see, Kengo does not do that. You never know what the heck form those zombies are going to take. It's all about a guy named Hideo who is actually a understudy for a manga artist. I'm, I'm not sure the exact word but it's the people that fill in all the backgrounds and do all the tiny bits for main manga artists and he's never quite hit it big. He's not living a very big exciting life, he's got a girlfriend. It's just a very normal existence for this guy Hideo. He's not the greatest and the people he works with is not the greatest. They don't talk about women very nicely and I don't really like him as a character which is weird to see that I'm so invested in this comic when I don't even like the guy that's trying to survive. Anyway, through the first volume, right? You get to like here and you can actually see visually the change in colour, the darkness that comes over the book. It's crazy. I wish I had a copy to show you. Uh, but this first half, I didn't quite understand why it was a zombie comic. Just him going to work, having a mundane existence, going to work, failing at manga, hanging out with his friends and then all of a sudden you get to like three quarters of the way through that manga. It was crazy. I was on public transport reading this comic, turned the page and there is the most graphic image of a woman turned zombie that I could not believe it. There was a guy looking over my shoulder and he did this. Shouldn't have been looking dude. This is a horror comic. Get out of my business. Great comic. Very exciting and I just can't get enough of it. So if Liam's, you know, you should read I'm a Hero is not enough. Well, I'm seconding that. I'm a Hero. Best comic I've read this entire month. This is a comic that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. It's by Egg Piscor and it is X-Men Grand Design. Now it's coming out in three parts. So the first two parts are out. They're going to be collected into a volume because I'm telling you this because you're going to want to read it but it's going to be hard to pick up these single issues. So go to your local comic store and pre-order the volume of X-Men Grand Design. Now you may know Ed Piscor from his work on Hip Hop Family Tree. He did the history of hip hop and he has such a unique style and also the colour of the pages. This yellow is now iconic and goes along with Ed Piscor's work and what he does is breaks down all the most important parts of X-Men history for you to read, to understand. So it's especially good for someone that's starting off in X-Men, you've never read X-Men and you feel a bit daunted and like you're going to have to keep reading Wikipedia. Well, first off, you don't need to do that. I can tell you the right book to read. Just come and see me or message me. I'll help you find the right comic to start off with. But if, failing that, <laughs> you still want to learn a lot about the X-Men in a really fun way, I can't recommend this enough. It has really great art, it's really easy to follow along, and follows a lot of everyone's favourite X-Men in different generations. So, first two out already, and then you can pick up if you place an order at your bookstore, you can get the volume, and then there'll be four more issues coming out, but the next one isn't too out late, late this year. So, can't get enough of this X-Men Grand Design. Really great learning comic, but also a ton of fun. Let's talk about She-Hulk issues 160 and 161. Now, devastating news, people. She-Hulk's finishing is done, it's dusted. Uh, it's only got a few more issues to go, which is absolutely devastating to me. I am a massive fan of Mariko Tamaki, and we all know my favorite superhero of all time 
is She-Hulk. I've always looked up to her and always loved her, especially in this run. That first six issues was so great. Talked a lot about dealing with problems and then having to go back to work after suffering depression and all that kind of thing. It was very relatable for me. Also going through a terrible time at the time. The tone has now shifted in the comic though. It's a little bit more over the top and silly and not as grounded as it was, I have to say that. But I still really enjoyed the latest storyline, had a massive fan of Hulk wanting to turn herself into Hulk to make an epic battle. It was just very over the top and silly, but I really enjoyed seeing Jen take on that big grey Hulk version of herself to battle another Hulk. So, highly recommend She-Hulk. If you haven't picked up any of the single issues, don't worry, there's volumes 1 and 2 currently out that you can pick up yourself. Now before we talk about Squirrel Girl issue 25, it's important that you guys know that I do not read all my single issues every month. I try to, but life usually does not permit me. And so I usually spend one or two mornings a week binge reading all my wonderful single issues and I read my trades and trade paperbacks in my backpack at work. So this month I read up on all my Squirrel Girl and then was so excited for issue 25 to come out because I read it all at once. This issue was so much fun. Squirrel Girl is teaming up with Loki, <laughs> believe it or not, to take on, I think it's Dreaded Doramu. Dreaded, I'll get his name. Jet Dreaded, Dread, Dread Doramu. I don't think I said that right. Anyway, uh, and yeah, at one point Loki turns into a giant squirrel and it's good fun and I love it. If you've never read Squirrel Girl, it's all about beating evil with the power of friendship which is a great thing. <laughs> For some reason, I don't think a lot of people are reading this comic, so I really need you to pay attention at this point. This is called Wrapped Up, okay? It's by Lion Forge Comics, and it is by far one of my favorite comics on the stands right now. It is a delight from start to finish. It's just a little bit of fun. It's for everybody. Every age can read it. It's all about Milo, who's a mummy, and in particular awesomeness, this issue has like a little bit of a Godzilla theme while they go on a field trip. This is Milo. He's a mummy. His sister is this cool goth chick. I think she's also a witch. Uh, and it's up to school shenanigans and shenanigans at home. His dad's a single dad. He's going on dates. It's so funny and it's just so quick-witted. Like, there's moments where I just don't think I'm gonna laugh and then all of a sudden I'm like <laughs> it's so good so good so if you enjoy a little bit of a spooky feel to your comics with silliness involving pizza and monsters then this is for you I love this comic so much and I like run home to read it every month when it comes out man I loved this comic Moonstruck issue 5 finally finished off that arc it's now being collected into trade paperback which you can pre-order from your local comic book store if you enjoy what I'm saying. Uh, it's by Grace Ellis of uh, Lumber James fame, which you guys know, and also a lady named Shay Beagle. It has the coolest, most charming art, and if you're a coffee drinker like uh, I am here, I've got a nice iced coffee I made, <sighs> then you're gonna love it because it's just beautiful imagery of coffee shops uh, and mythical creatures. So it's all about these two girls are going on a date. The date didn't go too well because their friend that's a centaur came along and a magical ghost slash magic fox uh, stole the centaur and turned it into legs. Like, he has legs. The, the, like, human legs. They took his centaur legs. It is so much fun and I love, love, love the art. If I said that already, let's do that again. Love the art. Love the writing. It's charming. It's lovely. So if you enjoy nice romance comics with a bit of a magical, mystical edge to it, Moonstruck. Sometimes you're in the mood for a sexy, lovely romance book, and this one is called Sugartown by Hazel Newland. I cannot recommend this comic enough. It is just sweet and lovely from start to finish. It is all about Hazel, who is in a bisexual, polyamorous relationship. They have a relationship with Gregor and it's been going great. They're having a great time. And then one night Hazel decides to hit up the club to meet some new people and across the way they meet Argent who is a dominatrix with a heart of gold. They start up a relationship and just have a wonderful time. It has all those great awkward moments from when you first start dating, from when you're not sure about this and you're not sure about that and where do I put this? It's so much fun uh, and everyone ends up okay at the end. I just loved this book. I loved the idea of a long distance relationship and the fact that it's LGBTQI. Yes please, Sugar Town, go and find it at your local comic store. It's by a very small press, if a press at all, so you're gonna have to request it by name. I've been dying to read this comic since I first saw it on Jensen Onja's Instagram. 
Uh, it was a webcomic first now in print. It is called Finding Molly Adventures in Cat Sitting by Justine Prado and Jensen Ange. This comic is just delightful. If you're a fan of adorable art and cats, you're going to love it. Molly is recently graduated from art school with a fine art degree and it can be very hard to find a job in between that time when you finish school and you're becoming an adult. So she's currently living with her family in the home but she wants to move to the cool art district of LA with her friends but first she's got to find a high paying job. What she doesn't find is a high paying job. What she finds is work within the cat industry. She begins doing cat art and pictures of people's cats, uh, puts it on Instagram and gets found, gets famous from that, uh, and then gets to start cat sitting and drawing her everyday comics about cat. The ideal goal is for her to meet the man of her dreams, which she's already met. Their name is Mateo, but she's too shy to tell them that. Uh, yeah, so it's a romance comic trying to find her true love while also trying to find herself. And it has so many cute pictures of cats and the coolest fashions. Like, do you ever look at someone and just think, I'm never going to be as cool as you? That's how I feel about the character design in Finding Molly. I loved this comic. It is a meowrific time. Meow. I tried to make that work. Meowrific. Don't worry about it. So that's some of the many, 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 many books that I've been reading in the past month. I want to know from you guys, what have you been enjoying? Have you been picking up any new series and single issues? Please let me know and then I can check them out for myself. I hope you're having a great week and I'll catch you guys again soon. Bye!